All right, we're going to divide this big doggy right here. And you just talked about, you just talked about how you guys set up the, the table. Now, I'm going to talk through the way I set it up. It's, I'm going to stay consistent uh, with the way I do it, but you could do it differently. It doesn't have to be exactly the way I set it up. So I just draw a random big box first. Oops. Um, and then the next thing I do is I look at the top polynomial, the, the one in the numerator, and the bottom polynomial, the one in the denominator. And the, that would also be called the dividend. Okay. I look to see if there's any missing terms. And I know if there's missing terms by uh, looking at the exponents. This is 5, 4, 3, 2, and that's 1, and then no exponent or no uh, variable. So there's no missing terms up top. I look on the bottom, I go 2, where's the 1? Oh, we have a missing term. So we're going to put 0x. So that's going to go right there after the x squared. So that has three terms right there. And then I'm going to start writing. And I put the dividend first. That's the denominator. x squared, 0x, and then 4. And that gets me started on my box. Now I know how many rows I have. So I draw my rows. Okay, there's my rows. And now I need um, my columns. Now in order to figure out how many columns I need, I look at how many terms I have in the numerator, the guy, the polynomial being divided. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, and so that means I need six arrows. Now my arrows are pretty specific. My arrows are coming from the diagonals. You guys should remember the arrows from when we multiplied uh, using the table method, the tabular method. So I have one, two, three right there. So I, I normally start with those corners, those lines, those horizontal lines, these guys. I draw an arrow at the end of every one of those. And now I have three more to do because we have six. So I'm going to divide this up here. I'll put one, two, three. And then from each of those arrows, I then draw my columns. Okay. So now the business starts. Let's, oh, i got to write down that top uh, polynomial. So I have 3x to the fifth, negative 2x to the fourth. Man, this is a lot of writing. 6x to the third. That's okay, though. If we do it right, we only have to write it once. Negative 4x squared, negative 24x, <clears throat> and then tw 16. All right, so there's actually two boxes that you can fill in right away, these two right here. But I normally only start with the far left one. I like to start right here and use that last box as like a checkpoint. So I put that one inside of that box, and then I start filling in missing, missing boxes. Now, I can't plug in these because I don't know what this number is up here. So what I do is I use this guy, and I go, okay, what, what times x squared would equal 3x to the fifth? So what's my missing number? Yes, 3x to the third. See, 3x to the third. I double-check it. Uh, let's see, 3 times 1 would be 3, and then x to the third times x squared would be x to the fifth because 3 plus 2 is 5. All right, so we're good with that. Now I can fill in these guys. So um, 3x to the third times 0x is going to be 0x to the fourth. Um, this part doesn't really matter, but I like writing it because it, you can see the like terms when we're finished. Um, 3x to the third times 4 is going to be 12x to the third. And now, which box can I fill in next? Now I'm looking for another box. I'm going to the next column right here, and I'm looking, is there a box there that I know? And you should say yes, because this box plus this box equals this number, or that term. So what would that be? Negative 2x to the fourth. That's what this arrow is here for, because we're adding up those, those boxes, the diagonals. So we put negative 2x to the fourth. And so what times x squared would give you that? <coughs> negative 2x to the second. Now I can fill in these other missing ones, and so I go negative 2x squared times 0x is going to be 0x to the third. And then I go negative 2x squared times the 4. I get negative 8x squared. Now I'm on to my next column. I'm just going column by column. It looks like I can find this missing box right there, because all of these are supposed to add up to 6x to the third. So 12x to the third plus 0, so that one doesn't matter, plus what would give me 6x to the third? Yeah, negative 6x. So I'm going to put negative 6x to the third right there. And then my question is, what is missing right there? That times that equals that. So what would that be? 
negative 6x. Negative 6x, and now I can fill in the rest of my column. Let's see, we got negative 6x times 0x is just going to be negative 6, I'm sorry, 0x squared. And then the bottom, the last one, negative 24x. All right, all right, so our next arrow that we haven't done yet um, adds up to negative 4x squared. So what plus this and this? Yeah, 4x squared. So I'm going to put a 4x squared right there, and now I can find this missing term. That missing term times x squared equals 4x squared. So what's that missing term? Four. It's just a 4. So I'm going to put a plus sign right there. It's a positive 4. So now I go 4 times 0x is 0x. 4 times 4 is 16. And then we see, oh yeah, we're right. We're on the right track. We didn't make any mistakes. So that means this up here is my answer. So I'm going to write that um, right here in my, for my answer. See, that's going to be, what is that? That's 3x to the third, and then minus 2x squared, minus 6x, plus 4. <clears throat> so this is the main answer right here. And then what they do, as we talked earlier, is they rewrote this as a product. Remember earlier we talked about, ooh, 24, um, let's, no, we went 4 times 6 equals 24. That's a product because we're multiplying. And 24 divided by 6 equals 4, or you can switch the 6 and the 4. So this first part right here is this one. Now I want to write the second part, which is this one. So how would I rewrite that? Well, we're just going to rewrite the... Um, this guy right here, the, the polynomial, our answer, into the other spot. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do that. 3x to the third, mm. and we have minus 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. So this times this equals the numerator. All right. Okay, uh, just to recap for the 0x, uh, remember that that's a missing term. So I, I put it in there, and I'm allowed to because it's just zero. If you add zero to something, do you change it? No. Nah. So I've, I'm adding a zero x there so, so that I can have this row. Now, this row is just a bunch of zeros. But if I didn't have this row, then my diagonals wouldn't, um, they wouldn't be like terms. You see how my diagonals are like terms? Like, the, like this is... This is my x to the fourth. This is, these are my x to the thirds. That's my x squared. If I didn't have that row, then these diagonals wouldn't line up. So the, it begs the question, do I have to put 0x? No, you don't. Just have to make sure that you add the like terms and not terms that are not like. Okay? All right.